Hi, welcome back. I prepare videos to help my students score in their STPM Maths D paper. I hope all my videos can be helpful for you too. Before you continue watching this video, please make sure that you have learned how to set rational fraction into the correct partial fraction form. If you have not, please pause this video and click on the link that I prepared below. That is the part one of my partial fraction. Let's find the partial fraction for this question. Before you can do so, let's check whether the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Once that is confirmed, then make sure that the denominator have been factorized completely. Once that is done, then the next step will be making sure that you have the correct format for this partial fraction. Because this is a repetition, so we are going to have a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1 squared plus c over x plus 2. Next, we are going to multiply the, the whole set with the denominator. So, once that is done, we are going to get something like this. The next thing that we are going to do is we need to find A, B and C. So, in my previous video, I say let's check on the denominator and find if there is any numbers we can use. For this case, we can use x equals to 1 and x equals to negative 2 to build our a, b, c, okay, our unknown constant. So I will let x equals to 1 and I will fill x equals to 1 onto the whole equation. So I will put all the value of x in the equation as 1 and I will fill it up and I will calculate and I will get my value B. Once that is done, I will try to use the second number, which is x equals to negative 2. Again, I'm going to fill in this equation over here and make sure I calculate the correct answer for C. Okay? Once C is done, I only have one more left. So, since there is only one more constant to find, so I'm going to use, still continue to use this substituting method. So, I'm going to give it a number which is easiest to calculate. So, I will put a zero into the equation. And from there, I know the value of B and C. And I'm going to put that in. And then my a will come out. Once that is done, I'm going to put all the constant that I found back into the equation. So I will, the place for a, I will change with 5 over 9. The place for b, I will change with 4 over 3. And the placing for c, I will put in negative 5 over 9. But this is too much for an answer. So I'm going to bring the 5 over 9, I'm going to bring the 9 as the denominator back into the placing for denominator. So, this is going to be my final answer. Let's have a look at this one. Is the degree of the numerator less than the degree of the denominator? Yes. Next. Let's see if this x power 4 plus x squared can be factorized. Once we factorize that, can x squared plus 1 still can be factorized further? If no, then we have to check what is the format suitable for this partial fraction. 
So because x squared is a repetition, so we have a over x plus b over x squared plus x squared plus 1 is a quadratic. So the numerator there, we will add in cx plus d. Now, once that is done, we will multiply both sides with the denominator. And we will end up something like this. Looks scary, but I got you. Okay, next thing, we are going to make sure we choose the correct format, the correct method to solve A, B, C, D. Let's say if I put in a number, which is x equals to 0, and of course, I can easily get b as a value, okay, as negative 3. However, when I put in another value, for example, x equals to 1, I will notice that the equation I build is kind of complicated. So I'm not going to waste time on the, met the first method which I teach you in question 1. So I'm going to directly use the equating coefficient technique. In my uh, first video, I've already talked about that, but I will just run through it again. What we do is we will take the element and multiply it back into the brackets. So we expand the whole thing and then we will collect all the one with the same degree together. So all the coefficient with this x cubed, I will collect together. With x squared, I will collect that together. x and of course a constant. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I compare each and every one of them and see if I can get the answer for A, B, C, D. Okay, so I'm going to compare the coefficient. So for x cubed, I will get A plus C equals to 5 because there is a 5 there. For x squared, I will have B plus D equals to negative 4. Because those are the same. And then for x, I will straight away get the answer for a. And for the constant, I will know b is negative 3. So I already got two values ready. So then for value for constant c and d, I can directly mental calculate and get the answer for c and d. D. Easy, right? Now it's time to put them back into our partial fraction equation. So the placing for A is 2, the placing for B is negative 3, the placing for C is 3, and the placing for D is negative 1. Voila, it's done. Before I continue, please consider subscribing and press the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I have a new video up. Now, for the, this next question, let's check the numerator and the denominator again. Confirm that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. The next thing is check if the denominator is properly factorized. If yes, then choose the correct format for this question. Now, inside this question, we have a quadratic as a denominator and a linear. So we will start with ax plus b over the quadratic uh, factors plus c over x minus 2. We will multiply both sides again with the denominator and it will end up something like this. So I have a, b, c inside my question now to find. The first number that I'm going to use is x minus 2. So I'm going to fill in x minus 2 when 
into the equation and I will get my first number ready. C equals to 10 over 7. The next thing is, I need to think, should I put in more numbers? Or should I use the other method? So, usually if there is more than one constant need to be calculated, equating coefficient method is the choice. So, I'm going to expand this carefully. Okay, so I'm going to expand this equation. And again, I'm going to get it into... Uh, the same degree together. So I have a plus c for x squared, negative 2a plus b plus c for x, and the constant will be negative 2b plus c. I'm going to compare the left and the right, and I will end up something like this. I will get a plus c equals to 0. Why? Because there is no uh, x squared on the left hand side. So the coefficient should be 0. I know that my c is 10 over 7. So I can calculate the a easily. The next one is, I'm going to compare with the constant. Negative 2b plus c. Because the constant is also 0 on the left. I'm not going to use this one for the coefficient of x. There's too many elements in there. It will be a waste of time. So I will put in the c again and I will calculate the value of b. Once that is done, I'm going to fill my partial fraction equation. So once I fill that, I'm going to put it in. The placing for A is negative 10 over 7. The placing for B is 5 over 7. And the placing for C is 10 over 7. Next thing is I'm going to bring the denominator down. So it will end up and I will make it uh, in a more... Uh, tidy form. So 5 because this is a minus. So I have 5 minus 10x over there. And I have 10 over 7 over here. Okay. I'm done for this question. In this question number 4, let's check. This time, the numerator has higher power than the denominator. So if this is the case, we need to do long division. If you have not seen my long division video, I will leave a link below. Please check them out. In that video, I will teach you how to step by step to solve this type of long division. Okay, so once the long division are done, I'm going to put the answer into this format. So that will be the quotient there, 3x plus 4. I will copy it here. This over here is actually the remainder after we do our long division. And divided by the polynomial in the denominator. Once that is done, we have to check whether the denominator have been properly factorized. For this case, no. So, I'm going to let the denominator as gx. Then, I'm going to apply the factor theorem to find one of the factors for this polynomial. I chose x equals to negative 3 and I got the answer 0. That will confirm that x plus 3 is a factor. Once I found that factor, I'm going to use x plus 3 and do long division with my polynomial x cubed plus 9x squared plus 27x plus 
27. So I'm going to do when the long division are done, then I'm going to write it like this. So since this is x plus 3 is the factor, so the answer at the quotient should be the next factor. Then I need to check whether x squared plus 6x plus 9 can be further factorized. Yes, it can. So now actually my denominator or the gx that I have here can be written as x plus 3 cubed. So the question that we have just now can be written like this. Okay, so now the numerator has less degree than the denominator and the denominator have been properly factorized. The next thing is going to be, I'm going to find the proper format for this partial fraction. So since this is a repetition, so I will have a over x plus 3, b over x plus 3 squared, and c over x plus 3 cubed. I have a, b, c to solve. Multiply both sides with the denominator. And I will end up something like this. So once I have this, I'm going to choose a number if I want. Or I can use the second technique, which is comparing the coefficient. So I'm going to choose a number first. So the number that I can use here is x plus 3 equals to 0. x equals to negative 3. I'm going to fill that in and I will calculate the answer for C. Once I get that, I'm going to use, because I have two more constants that I need to find, so I'm going to apply equating coefficient technique inside here. So like usual, I will expand this, x plus 3 squared, and then I will multiply in the A and collect all the same degree together, the coefficient of the same degree together. The next thing, of course, will be comparing. So I can get the answer for A very fast. As you can see, x squared is 5x squared on the left hand side. So the value of A will be 5. The next thing that I'm going to compare will be 6A plus B. I'm not going to use the constant here because there's too many elements inside there. So I'm going to use the easier one. So 6A plus B equals to 30. So the value of A is 5. So I'm going to get the number for B. So for this case, B is 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill everything in properly. So the A, the value of A, the value of B, and the value of C. Once that is done, then my answer is out. Well, that wraps up this video. Please consider subscribing because in my next video, I will talk about how to solve polynomials. Hope to see you there. Have a wonderful day ahead.